Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. My God, all you need is riches in the Lord Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you a little story. Some of y'all know this, I don't know. But back when Rich and I first went to Tulsa back in 1980, and um, anyone and Anna were just babies, animals babies. Anyway, we went to this little bitty church. It's called Bridge Church. And it met in a school. And the pastor had been a Baptist. So I guess he was still a Baptist. But he got filled with spirit. So he left the Baptist church. And so they were meeting in the school, and this was kind of strange for us because we always gone to big denominational churches. And my dad was a denominational pastor, Presbyterian minister. Okay, so we were in that church, and it was time for them to take up the offering. There was about as many people there as in here right now. Yeah. And um, the Lord shared that scripture. That man shared that scripture. My God shall meet all your needs. According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I I'd never heard that scripture before. What I'm getting to. I'd never heard that scripture before because I'd gone to a Presbyterian church. And if they taught it, I I just didn't catch it. I never I never had heard that scripture before. My gosh, you know your needs. And what I heard in my spirit, instead of, you know, like talking about finances and healing and all that, all of a sudden what I heard was God was saying to me that he loved me and that he was aware that I existed. Because before, God was always up there in heaven and I was down here on earth. And I just had to make do the best I could. But what I heard for that scripture was that my God who love me and care about me and is aware about me right now where I am. Right. My God will meet all my needs Amen. and for his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. And then I, I learned later on, you know, that all your needs is all your needs. <laughs> all is all. Hallelujah. And and that means that does that does include your healing. Amen. It does include your finances. It does include you getting a job. That's it does right. include benefits and raises. That's right. You know, it, it does include better gas prices and deals and all those things that we confess every day. It includes all of that because he meets all our needs according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It does include our loved ones getting saved that aren't saved. Mm-hmm. It includes everything. And when you and when you come to the Lord. The, the scripture I was going to read was um, in um, in Proverbs three, and it will starting with verse five. It says, "Trust in the Lord," and that's what it all comes down to: trusting in the Lord, not trusting in yourself or your job or what you can make happen, but putting your trust in God. Amen. And then He said, "He will meet all your needs." Hallelujah. So let's let's give our have an offering to the Lord because we love Him. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. <laughs> I love Him. He does good things to me every day. Amen. I'm so good to me. I'm so glad. And thank you, Lord. So we are believing with our hearts. We're believing with our hearts. And confessing with our mouths. Confessing with our mouths. Are we really believing? We're believing. We're believing. We're believing. Oh, yeah. And it's really confessing with our mouths. That God's going to do this for us because He meets all our needs. Hallelujah. According to His riches and glory. Thank you, Father. We are believing for jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Increased benefits. Increased benefits. Ideas for new inventions. Ideas for new inventions. And business opportunities. Business opportunities. States and settlements. States and settlements. So property. So property. Deals on purchases. Deals on purchases. Supernatural protection. Supernatural protection. Always steward over. Always steward over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your angels. Hallelujah. Bills paid and canceled. Bills paid and canceled. Lower utilities and gas prices. Lower utilities and gas prices. Health and improved health. Health and improved health. And daily blessing. Yes, 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 yes,
on Facebook right now. Praise God. We welcome everyone that's uh, here. We've already welcomed the heavenly hosts and the ministering spirits, angels, Jesus, saints. Amen. Praise God. So, let's, uh, you can hook me up here. Thank you. Hooking me up. Yeah, that's right. Do anything to get on camera. Praise God. Praise God. I really tell a prayer. Uh, this is actually an opening prayer. I don't you see. You can you see that? You don't have to see that. Y'all, y'all just get in agreement with me. Amen. I wrote across this brother named Dan Duvall. Cut your phone off, please. Uh, a brother named Dan Duvall. He's a uh, head of Bride Ministries. And uh, they specialize in dealing with the counseling uh, satanic ritual abuse victims and uh, people that have, uh, uh, I call it multiple personalities. Uh, a lot of people that have experienced some really harsh abuse, uh, what your, your soul will do will, will begin to form they just break off parts of your soul and form their own. I don't know how to really explain it. Form their own part. You'll have multiple souls. Yeah, I know some people say, well, there's demons. Well, sometimes there's, there's certainly demonic things involved. And some demons will come to that. But the sad thing is, even after people get, get delivered from demonic oppression, their souls are divided. Uh, you know, Psalm 23 says, part of it is that the Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh is my shepherd. And he restores my stuff, my soul. Say, so restore my soul. Restore my soul. And the divided heart, the broken heart. So they specialize in that and they do a great work in counseling. But he also writes a lot of prayers. And this, this was a prayer he uses to open every session with a with an individual who's counseling them or doing a group counseling, a group uh, message. And I'll read it to you, okay? It's a prayer, and this is it's great. Get a hold of this book. <clears throat> you know, I got, got it off Kindle, some Kindle. On Amazon. Father God, <clears throat> Father God, now this is this is you set the atmosphere for what you're about to do. Amen. Are y'all out there? Mm-hmm. Anybody work out? So, Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We praise you for this day as it is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We assume the armor armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We take up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, We also take up the garments of vengeance and the cloak of zeal. We declare that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in our midst. Lord Jesus, we stand at the door and knock. And to him who opens it for you, you will come come in and you will sup with him. We open the door to you. Now do that. Open the door to Jesus. Open the door to Jesus. We open the door to you and invite you to establish your presence in our midst. We declare right now that every amnesiac wall, barrier, blockade, stronghold, or veil that would otherwise hinder progress and get in the way is put to sleep, disengaged, and moved out of the way in Jesus' name. Every curse, every hex, every vex, every spell, every incantation, every form of witchcraft, voodoo, dark art, and other forms of weaponized demonic activity are reversed upon the heads of the senders sevenfold that they would know that Jesus is Lord. 
I'm talking to all your witches up there. We declare that every human spirit, hybrid spirit, demonic spirit, synthetic spirit, spirit child on assignment to create distraction, confusion, triggering of bombs, trip wires, booby traps, and other types of programming are now discovered, bound in chains and fetters of iron and put where the true Lord Jesus sends them. We thank you, Holy Spirit of truth, that you are present to lead us and to guide us into all truth for you. Do not speak of yourself, but whatever you hear, that you speak, and you show us things to come. And we call this session into fruitfulness. And we thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for the healing and the breakthrough that will manifest during this time. Amen. 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 I'm glad all y'all agree with that. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You open your Bible to Ephesians, the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I got lots of stuff to preach, but this is what I'm preaching over today. Okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all remember how powerful a prayer that is? Amen. This guy writes prayers. He writes prayers for people to help them get delivered. That you can, you know. You have to, some people need guidelines and, and need to cover specific things. That's right. and, and a lot of times we don't understand through our limited knowledge of certain things, we don't realize some things that might be tripping or hindering us in our lives that others that are more experienced in certain, certain matters are able to point us point to us. A lot of people think, well, I've never, you know, I grew up in the Methodist church. I'm just talking about me in the Methodist church in the I never heard the pastor uh, uh, stand up before and open the service by binding spirits of witchcraft and voodoo and hoodoo and, and the people say, oh, that's all, that's all superstition, Brother Rich. No, I've dealt with it. I know what it is. And I know it's a sign of you. If you get on Facebook and start and just share just a little bit of the Word of God, uh, you'll realize there's people out there that don't like you. There's some that like you, and I don't mean just like you. I'm talking about they don't like you. And they will immediately recognize that you are a threat to their kingdom. Because we are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. That's right. Amen. Can I be so bold? You, you, come on, y'all. We are, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. If you were not a threat to the kingdom of darkness, he would not be giving you such a hard time. That's right. Now, sometimes your own stupidity will cause you to have a hard time. But we're getting over that. Because we're putting on the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Not on, we're not relying on our own natural intellect and natural learning or knowledge, but we're relying on the intellect of the Most High God. Thank you, Lord. We have interfaced with the divine computer that has all knowledge. The storehouse is full. Come on, y'all get it. You realize that? You know, they say Google's got a big computer out on, uh, I think it's on, uh, you know, on where Alcatraz used to be, someplace out there in California. It's so big that it's, uh, it covers a whole bunch. You know, if you can get all this technology in something as small as this or, or a, an iPhone, think of what kind of technology they got stored in that thing. And think if you have, you know, you have you do have access to some of it. You can Google anything, you know, Google it. I can, I can frustrate with my Bible. I've got two Bible programs I've used for years, and sometimes they will just, because of, because of the theology of the people that wrote them, they don't like certain phrases, and they just don't put them in their search. But you can go on Google, and Google is different. They're not religious. They just bring it right up. Sometimes, sometimes I cannot find on my own Bible programs written by Christians. You can find on Google. So you're hooking up to the mind or something. You're hooking up to information. You're hooking up to information that you don't have that. that, that even years, just 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you didn't have access to without laboring. You know, Bible programs, you go in, touch a word, and the strong, you know, the, the language comes up, the original language, and it's not always right because the theology teams are skewed sometimes. But at least you have access to those things. Where years ago we didn't carry around, you know, I would, some of y'all remember the old strong concordance was about this big and about that, you know, you carried it around like this, you know, and you had to search through it like that. Now I used to touch a word that goes, zoop, 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 you know, not only that, but other stuff, a flip book, and I wanted to come up with other stuff. But, you, but that's nothing compared to the fact that you, <clears throat> as a born from above, spirit filled believer, 
have the mind of Christ, now that's more than just his intellect, that's his, that's his mind, that's what, his attitude, that's the way he sees things, which is really important. Amen. But you have access, you have access to all the, the knowledge and the wisdom of Almighty God, the creator of the universe, you have access to, if you'll interface with, by, with your spirit and your soul, interface with, learn how to interface with God. Engage God. Engage the Almighty. And come on, and you need to understand, this is not about just praying a sinner's prayer, getting born again, and waiting around twiddling your thumbs until, until you die and go to heaven. Or you, if you think Jesus is coming back going to wish you away, you'll probably, be, you'll probably die sitting there waiting. If you're the, a traditional, I'll fly away, whatever it is. I'll tell you this right now, that's not what it's all about. But if you'll learn, it's not about that, it's about engaging, say engage. Yes. Engaging, which means, means couple together, come together in a relationship. A relationship with Almighty God through the Holy Spirit. First through the blood, the blood door of the Lord Jesus Christ. The portal into the heavens of his own being and through his blood that was shed for us to redeem us and make us worthy to approach the throne of grace and mercy. Not only just to go there begging and asking for something to help us out down here, but to go up there and, and to interface with him and learn his heart and get his heart, get the Father's heart. And have the Father's heart, your heart become one so that when you return from that place, and begin to walk on this earth. You'll not walk as a mere mortal person, but you'll walk as one who is immortal, eternal, in the heavenlies, who is a product of that which was, which is, and that which is to come. Amen. I hope somebody out there is getting something out yeah. of this. Amen. These are they're all asleep. Build for that prayer again. Some kind of amnesiac spirit come on you. Come on, I'm here to wake you up, wake you up. Your life as a Christian, as a believer, is not just about going to church on Sunday. Most people don't even go to church on Sunday, but it's more than just getting bored again and then waiting around. Not doing that. The Lord Jesus brought you, He saved you so that you could be saved. Amen. He delivered you from the powers of darkness so He might translate you into the kingdom of His beloved Son. Amen. Amen. In whom he's well pleased. Yeah. Yeah. And listen to him. I'm going to put two or three verses together. But he said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. The other place on my trans of tr transfiguration, he said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. And then he added to it. Listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to him. So that implies to me that there's some kind of, he's going to be speaking and we're going to be listening. And I'm here to straighten you. I'm going to straighten something out right now. Whatever I say to you, whatever I teach you, whatever I share with you is only my testimony. It's only what I've experienced in reality. Not what I've learned in a book. I've been influenced by and we're all influenced by listening to other people and listening to read their stuff. And I, but what I want to share to you, listen, when I'm standing here, I'm going to share with you my testimony of what I've experienced. That's right. And what is real to me. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to uh, make me prove something. I'm not going to prove anything to you. It's not my responsibility to prove anything to you. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you into all reality. That's part of your covenant. Amen. In that day, and look what it says, in that they, they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen. Are you a fellow citizen of, of heaven? Not teaching. And everyone, his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Now, if you go back to the Hebrew, that word is Yana. It means to walk with, have intercourse with, have intimate fellowship with. Walk with the Lord. Yahweh, Lord, hey, Bob, hey, know the Lord. For all, all, say all, all will know him from the least to the greatest of them. So if you fall into that category of least, all the way up to the greatest, Amen. then that is your covenant right. Do you understand? This is what the new covenant. Come up being under the law. That's your law right there. Amen. Amen. To know the Lord. Amen. You 
Start out the verse. He said, I'll put my laws into your mind. I'll put them into your mind. And I will write them on your hearts. I come tired of people saying, God's done away with the law. He's done away with, with applying the laws. His laws are eternal and everlasting. But now no longer they're written on a table of stone for you to be read and somebody to beat you over the head and get you done. Now he writes them in your mind and your hearts. In your heart, and as you receive them in your heart, you desire to do what He has put in your heart. Amen. And He has empowered you with the, the power of grace, say grace, grace. To, to be able to accomplish that which He's put in your heart. You can't do it by your own might. You can't do it by your own power. Well, you can't do it by the Spirit of grace. Through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift. Good Lord, has He got to give it to you all on a silver platter? Yes! But you must receive it. Do you follow me? Amen. Is anybody out there? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So you have to engage God. This is all about a relationship, not just with Jesus. Praise God, you have to have a relationship with Jesus again. He did all this thing. But the Father, Jesus said, in that day, I talked to him for boys, you know, in that day you shall ask me or you shall question me about nothing, but in that day you shall ask the Father in my name, and that he will give it to you. He'll answer you. He'll talk to you. You can absolutely have an interface with Almighty God, the Father, the Creator. Amen. You can't go out and say, oh, no, you know, no man can see God now. Well, Jesus said, he said, I see the Father, and he said, I'll forbid it to anyone that I, I, I had desire. Amen. Well, now, the others, oh, you couldn't approach the Father in the past because you weren't righteous. That's right. That's why it said no man can look over the face of God and live. At that time, nobody could but those that were declared righteous. But now through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, he that had, that had no sin became sin that you what? Might become, might become, might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And because you are the righteousness, you have been made, made righteous by the blood. You may approach the Father. Yes. Engage the Father. Amen. A lot of people, you're engaging them down here. That's where you start out. You know, you cried up to heaven. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, help me, help me, help me. You break out your shopping list, your grocery list, whatever. Say, give me this, Lord. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's lots of people where I teach you gimmicks and stuff. You know, well, if you give me $58, well, you know. <laughs> what are you talking about? That, you can't buy this. It's already bought. Amen. It's painful. You know, you went up to the angel and handed them a $50 bill. They make a $50 bill, a $100 bill, say, I want, I want to see the Father. He say, I, son, I, I can't take your money. It's already been paid for. Amen. I said, Yeshua, paid for it. Amen. With his blood. That's right. It's your right. It's your blood right. Amen. As a, as a son. Most of us are still children, but God wants to grow up and be sons. Amen. Right. Right. Responsibility is required in sonship. Amen. Be careful what you ask for. Amen. Right. Right. Just just recently, I found I'm talking about something. I told her I said I was talking to the Lord. I, I was I was engaging the Father. And I said, well, I, was, I was making a decision about something. I said, Father, what do you want me to do? How many, how many Christians I was going to go around and ask the Father, what's your will, Father? What's your will? Well, you know what? <clears throat> when, you're, when you're young, when you're a child, it's a good thing to know what your parents want you to do. Or else you might get smoked. That's right. But you know, when you're, when you're 25, 30 years old, you, and you go to your parents and ask them what I should do, now, I'm not, you can give them advice and stuff, but you can't tell an adult what to do. That's right. Well, you can't hardly tell children what to do. That's right. But if you understand, don't I? When you get to a certain age, you have to take on, whether you like it or not, and this is a very uncomfortable thing, you must take on responsibility for your own life. Oh. Probably the biggest challenge the younger generations have right now under that are under 40 I guess because my generation screwed y'all up with our walking away from God 
biggest challenge is to begin to take responsibility for your own life. And more importantly than that, to respond to his ability that has so been freely granted to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. God, my God, say, give me something. You, you, God gave you two things that you cannot be replaced by anything. He gave you, according to the book of Romans, Apostle Paul, he gave you the gift of righteousness. Amen. That's a gift. That means they're, they're right. You know, going back to the old Kenyan days, his definition of righteousness was the ability to approach God without any sense of shame, guilt, condemnation, or fear. Amen. And that's senses. That's sense of it. A lot of people will approach God because of shame, because of guilt, because of condemnation, because they've been beat down their whole life by everybody in the world and in the church beating down. Now, here to tell you some good news. You've got the gift of righteousness. God's given you the gift of righteousness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says the second thing is the abundance of grace. Amen. The abundance of grace. That means not a little bit, a little dab will do you. It means the abundance. Say abundance. 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 Have you ever beheld abundance? Have you ever been overwhelmed by abundance? Most of us have never been overwhelmed by abundance. We just barely have to get along in the natural. I'm telling you right, in the realm of the spirit, which is more real than the, than the realm that you dwell in right now, there is such an abundance of grace that's beyond measure, beyond thought, beyond but your comprehension as a human being. The grace of God, the favor of God, the love of God. Oh, oh the power of God available to you. I don't give a rip. I tell it, I'm saying it right now. I've declared it, decreed it into the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. It is there. Amen. Thanks for shaking. Things are quaking and things are making. Yes. <laughs> things are shaking. Things are quaking. Things are making. Good word, good word. Making. God's making. Good word. He's making us. Y'all wake up. Yes. You, you spirits of slumber. I've been already prayed over that I'm bound them. You get out of here in Jesus' name. Spirits of slumber go. How you come up? You awake sleeper. You know what Paul said in the Romans? He said, awake old sleeper. Awake under righteousness. Yeah. What's he talking about? He said, get out of your slumber and realize you're right with God. You can come to the Father's throne and approach Him Amen. and talk with Him. Not just come back with your shopping list. But come talk to him. Find out his heart. He wants to reveal his heart. Have you ever wanted somebody just to know what you really were like on the inside? I'm talking about not the bad stuff, but just, just the part of it that your heart. What I really, what I intended. So many times we are misunderstood. People judge us. People think we're up to no good by you, you know, because of their experience. But, it, but don't you desire someone to know the real you, the heart, your heart, what your heart is. Even though you make mistakes, even though you messed up, you screw up sometimes. But you know, your intentions, your intentions were, were God, your intentions were good. How much more so the Father wants his heart revealed? Sure. How much more so? Listen, the Father God, the creator of the universe, made you, made you to have a relationship with him. And I'm not talking about a one-time, I'm talking about an ongoing relationship. Signs and wonders, gifts of the Spirit, all these things cannot replace relationship. Remember that Jesus said that? He said in that day people came to him, he said, and Jesus said to him, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. He said, for I never knew you. And if you took that in Hebrew, you got out of there. I never intimately had any conversation with you. You never treated me like I was alive. I was just a fire ticket. I was just a, a ticket. You know, go free from hell. He followed me. He said, but in the name of God, but Lord, didn't we do this? And he, he listed every charismatic Pentecostal gift you can <laughs> But didn't we heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead? Jesus said, that ain't, you know, he said that ain't, isn't it, is, is that good? Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But that does not, those spiritual, uh, spirituals do not replace, those, those are the Holy Spirit doing stuff through you. But they will not replace your, your intimate fellowship with the Father. That's right. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. Amen. That will produce in you the, the fruit of the Spirit. 
fruit comes from a tree being planted, established, and receiving the proper nourishment, the proper water, the proper sunlight, everything that only the Father can give, and it'll produce fruit. And God's got you trees of righteousness, oaks of righteousness, plant the planting of the Lord. Y'all get it there? Amen. That's my rant. I'm sticking to it. Chakra out of my son. Tell us that. Fellow has a strange question today. She says, are you, did, when you're up there, do you feel, what are you, you stumble around and were you, do you feel drunk or what? I said, I don't know what to feel. <laughs> she said, where are you? She said, where are you? I said, well, I'm in two places. <laughs> <laughs> the the guy pops up, he, this is a long time, this is 30 years ago. He said, he said you're going to be, you're going to be preaching and teaching. He said, he said, you're going to stand and you're, you'll be, You'll find yourself watching yourself. You'll be standing alongside yourself watching. I've had to that. I stood there and watched it. What's she going to say that? <laughs> Praise God. But that's not, I don't make anything special, does it? Everybody can do that. If you're just engaging. Amen. He didn't well, he, he call me to preach or teach in public. What well, caused you to, to share Jesus with people, didn't he? See, if you'll get caught up in the heavens and share Jesus with people, you can be standing there watching yourself lead somebody to Jesus. Amen. It's a lot easier. Amen. You're already seated with him in the heavenly places. That's right. We Amen. think that's some kind of theological thing. No, your spirit is actually seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Quit thinking up and down. It's different dimensions. The heavens are different dimensions. They're all around. These angels don't come down from anywhere. They, they just come out. From, from wherever the dimension they're walking into this dimension. Or, or, or something you can see into the Lord gives you the ability to see into that dimension. That's right. Amen. All right, it's enough weird woo woo stuff right there. Y'all find Ephesians 5 1. <coughs> We welcome everybody watching uh, online, or is anybody watching? Praise God. My faith and believe. I'm going to read to you from the uh, the American Standard first. Can y'all see that? I know that it's not the best operation in the world. It's the best therefore, therefore, and then be good, because you see a therefore, it's good to go and find out and on your own what it's there for. But we're going to start off right here. Therefore, therefore, be imitators. Be imitators of God as beloved children, as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you. That was that was that was Jesus' love walk. That's how he walked in love. He loved you and gave. See, love is, a, love is not a noun, it's a verb. You, you follow me? He said, so he said, love just like Christ loved you. How did Christ love you? How did Christ, how did Jesus love you? How did Yeshua love you? This is the way he loved you. He gave himself up. He gave himself up. Nobody took him. Jesus said, No man takes my life. He said, No man takes my life. That's the thing about it. people, you know, they didn't come grab Jesus and drag him off kicking and screaming. He willingly allowed himself to be led like a lamb to the slaughter. He gave, him, he gave himself up, up, what, for what? An offering, an offering, and a sacrifice, an offering and a sacrifice. He's not only the blood of the, of the Lamb of Atonement, but he was also the blood of the scapegoat, That's right. the sin offering. Amen. He gave himself up the offering and a sacrifice to, to God, his Father, as a fragrant, he came up as a fragrant aroma, came up as a fragrant aroma into the nostrils of God. 
Now, can you imagine this picture? This is you imagine it. You see, on the day of the, on the day of the crucifixion, on the day of the, before that, he, Jesus was beaten, and on the day of the cruci crucifixion, from our perspective, looking up, even his disciples who led and fled for him, looked up upon the horror of what was being inflicted on Jesus. The stripes were laid, been, been laid on his back. The, the nails that were put in his hands. The, the crucifixion of the, of the only begotten Son of God. From our perspective, we're looking at it. We're looking at it. The horror of it. They're looking at the disciples. It's like this is the end of our ministry. This is the end of our deal. Our leader's been killed. I mean, they're looking. But from heaven, but from heaven, the Father is seeing it as an offering and a sacrifice for the pleasing aroma. In the Old Testament, listen, in the Old Covenant, where they offered up a sacrifice of bulls and goats, let me tell you something. That was, that was some good smelling stuff. You like to, who likes the smell of a steak on the grill? Mm -hmm. Now if you vegetarian, I don't know. Uh, zucchini on the grill just don't turn me on. I don't know. It's good. I like to eat it. But it just don't have that produce that aroma, you know. Right, just, I can smell somebody else. I don't cook steaks very often because I just... <laughs> when somebody down the block is cooking one to these... Not good talking about food right this time, no. That's bad teaching room number three. Don't talk about food in three times. But y'all are stout Lord. I know y'all been fasting and you're because you're seeking God. You don't care about food. But I'm still trying to see something in your mind. You smell that smell. Can you imagine from heaven's perspective? I'm gonna give you heaven's perspective. Here's the Father. Here's the angels. He's surrounded by seraphim, cherubim, opalum, and uh, all these ranks, thrones, dominions, powers, he's surrounded, all the saints in heaven. And, and, and what's coming up from the earth in the spirit realm, and the, and the, the senses are different. What's coming up from the earth at that time is something that's a sweet smelling aroma. Now down here it's bad looking, but up there the smell is coming up. You, why is it such a, why, what is, why do you like to, when you smell something that's enticing, it's because you know that you're going to partake of it pretty soon, or you can partake of it pretty soon. Don't you know? Oh! <clears throat> when the Father was smelling the sweet savor of the sacrifice of the aroma of the Lord Jesus, His only Son, who given Him, He gave, gave Himself up an offering. He gave Himself up an offering. He wasn't taken. He wasn't crucified by men. He gave Himself up an offering to the Father. Say, Daddy, this is my complete obedience. This is what Adam didn't do. I did. By the power of your Holy Spirit, I obeyed to the end, even unto death. Yeah. This is what I'm offering up to you, Daddy. Now I lie by sinless life in order that I can bring all them to you. Amen. I can bring all of your creation back to you. I can restore all of mankind back to you. Right. I can restore all of the planet, the creation, the trees, the birds, the, whatever you made. You, well, I can restore it all. It can all be restored back to you. Daddy said that smells good. Amen. 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 Lord. Daddy said that smells so good. I'm going to come down there and get you. Lord. And he did. And he raised him from the dead. And the resurrection. Through the death, death we have forgiveness. The death we have reconciliation. Through the death we have redemption. But through the resurrection we have life. life. Amen. The resurrection is life. It's his death did certain things, but his life lives now. Amen. In us. In us. In you and me and believers. His life lives in us. To bring a demonstration of what Father can do. On this planet. Amen. He said, be imitators. Verse 1 says, be imitators as dear children. Because the word imitators is, is mimic. I get the word mime or mimic. Teach this to, to Zach and Richie, teach in their Bible study. You know, a mime, you know what a mime or mimic is? So, you know, it's, some people find them annoying, you know. This is a mime. This, I'm climbing a wall. You know? There's no wall right there. But you're using your imagination. You know? 
I said, your imagination is very important to you. Now, fantasies are not. That's right. But imagination, God gave you imagination. You know that nothing is ever made by, by people without imagination. Mm -hmm. if, ever, if you've ever made it, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a painter, I'm an artist. I'm not, I'd say that ain't good, but I am. <laughs> and uh, everything that I paint exists already in my mind, in my imagination, before I ever start to, to paint. I put it, put something on the camera. You realize that? So, so what's unseen is really real. It just hasn't been manifest yet. Amen. Are you out there? That's right. You need to get over this thing with less than your imagination. One way to engage in the spirit is you, is you start out in your imagination. Nobody ever told me. You know, I, I like to sit down and I'll, I'll just begin to focus on the Lord. And if necessary, I'll picture take some scripture like in, out of Revelations about the throne the throne room. Now I'll picture that and I'll, and I'll just I'll begin to imagine myself approaching that throne. Mm -hmm. And I'll and, and, and imagine what the angels are like, what the sounds are like, what it's, and just begin to build build a picture in my mind. It was is that is that is that that's not fantasy, but it's imagination. But then that that will lead you into an engagement with the, the Actually, it'll, tra it'll translate over into go beyond imagination. I was telling about you begin to see things that you didn't imagine. Certain things you can you can imagine, but once you've engaged and, and you've entered into the, the realm of the spirit, and then then you're there to see and protect, participate, in fellowship. Amen. And then it's no longer your imagination. You're seeing things. Well, I'm not. I'm not thinking about that. I didn't. You know, I never thought about that. What is that? You know, then you're there to observe. A lot of times I'm just out in the observation stage of this thing. You know, go, go take a trip and look around. You know. What's that? What's that? Why that? You know, and then come back and ask the Holy Spirit. Lean into the Holy Spirit and ask him, the Holy Spirit, what was that? I don't understand that. Can you show me? He said, yeah, I take you to the Word. Take me to the world and show me. So it's right there. You know, you, that's engaging. That's, you said that, but that's engaging the Father. Because you engage, you engage His realms. You begin to engage the Father, and then, then you get to see Father, and you get to get Dad. I ain't got too deep into it. Well, I'll tell you right now, God <coughs> is raising up the church to that to that that point where it's not just special people do this stuff. That this is the will of God for every believer. Is it problem? Does that, if you're not doing that, does it make you a bad person? No, it just makes you not have as much fun, <laughs> and that, and not be able to go and, and perhaps receive a, assignment from heaven to bring back to earth. You know, we spent years and years. We were involved in intercession and in, in to degree still is. And we did so much, you know, warfare and pulling down and, and doing this stuff. And that's, that worked a little bit, but it's much easier to go into the heavenlies and find out what daddy really wants and then get an assignment and come back. Or to actually to decree things from the heavenlies. It's much easier to get through the, the demonic strongholds if you decree from the heavens instead of decreeing on earth, trying to decree it to heaven. And, and you have to pass all the demonic interference and stuff. They ain't up there. That's right. I'm talking about these things, these creepy people things that ain't up there. That's right. It's like you, I heard you used to hear people say, you know, I prayed that my prayers didn't get any higher than I see them. Well, that's your problem. You should have got higher than I see Amen. That's right. And I'm not talking about taking drugs. <coughs> Amen. That's right. God, I'm going to get in trouble. Therefore, be imitators of God. Be imitators. Can you imagine that when he's telling you this apostle here, this the real, a real apostle, is telling you, he said, he's encouraging you to be imitators of God. Act like God. Whoa! No, no! What's that mean? I'm not God! Oh, it's new age! Oh. No, 
you're not God. You never will be. There ain't, no, ain't nobody around here worried about you being God because we you know him. Amen. But but you need there there's there's attributes of the Father and of Jesus that will be expressed in you in your DNA and in your being because of who you are. And he's encouraging them to be imitators. You know, little kids, if they're real fond of like they see their dad or their mom or something, you know, hopefully if it's a boy, he'll imitate his dad instead of his mom. God bless us. Uh, they'll, 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 they'll mimic. You ever see little kids do that? You know, you be sitting there doing something, and little kids doing the same thing. You know, and you think they're making fun of it, they're just mimicking it. That's how kids learn. They learn by observation. That's why it's, it's hard for a, a child that's growing up in a, in a fatherless home to take on a, uh, a masculine identity mm-hmm. or vice versa. That's right. You know, humans do not come prepackaged into this earth. Amen. I don't know if you know that or not. They're, they're, they're like, to be, you know, we used to get model airplanes, you know? Y'all ever, y'all ever did that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, to be a symbol. The picture on the box is great. But when you open it up, it's a lot of parts and it have to be a symbol. That's kind of like the way people call it. You know, you should have a vision. You should have a vision of that person given to you by the Father of what the completed model looks like. Amen. But sadly, we, we're stuck as parents of putting it together. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it goes together a lot better with glue. And the Holy Ghost is your glue. Amen. 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 You know, nowadays you buy glue, you have to have a license to buy glue because people abuse it. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that I was wise in the model airplane when I was a kid so much. I still so good at building these model airplanes. <laughs> 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 Snipping glue, I guess. I don't know. To be, where to get to? be imitators of God. He says, be imitators of God. This is, I'll get to this one real quick. I don't know. What time I, I can't see. Oh, gosh, can you see my glasses? Oh. Be imitators of God as beloved children. I'm going to hit you hit this beloved. We talked about this. Who was that? We talked about how you remember this? Be, as, be imitators of God as beloved children. This word is a beautiful word. It's agapitos. I hope I pronounced it right. Agapitos. Agapitos. And I tell you, you are, you are an agapitos. Because of the Greek word agape, which is, you know, is love, the highest form of love. You know, there's, there's, there's three levels of love, at least three. There's the eros, which is erotic, it's where the word erotic comes from, this sort of, uh, physical, uh, all the hormones range and stuff, love, that kind of love. Oh, I just love you! No, you don't, you just want to go to bed with it. Uh, huh? That's the eros. Sadly, the world, all the world knows is eros. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I think I'm in love. And that's why, you know, like six months later, you're not in love anymore because the, the hormones have been wore off and there was nothing there to hold your relationship together. Okay. And so you go looking for love again and again and again. You got your eros. It is phileo, P H I L O. Philaeus, where the city of Philadelphia was founded after, named after Philaeus, or brotherly love. That's brotherly love. That's, that's friendship. That's where you have an affection for somebody. You know, because you like them, your friend, your brother, your sister. And then, the, then you go to agape. Agape is the kind of love God is. God is love. Agape, agape. I'm, not, I'm, if I'm, not, I'm from Mississippi for those who are watching this. If I'm not pronouncing it correctly, you can translate it. I thought about it. You know, I actually had a vision of getting Steve to translate for me. I, I, had, I saw it and he was translating. I, it was the English people were talking. I thought, that'd be cool to have it. English to English or Mississippi to English. <laughs> and I thought, what kind of warning would happen? Did that, or I'm going to be translating for it. Uh, now it would work because someone, somebody's going to follow. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> 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 
So agape is kind of love God. Y'all lose interest in this? You all, you all are losing interest in it. <laughs> I said, are you losing interest in Jesus going, you yes, know? <laughs> oh, did you like to translate? Good. You can imagine what happens to some, some people that are, golly, Jesus. Well, I won't listen to him, I'll listen to him. The old man shot. Agape is the kind of love God is. Amen. Now this, is, this, is a, this is a real stretch for human beings because very few human beings have experienced agape love. Yeah. Agape is not based on, first of all, it's not based on, on hormones and sexual attraction or anything like that. God's not hot for you. Right. Yeah. Now I ain't trying to be ugly. I'm just getting down to where you're thinking, you know. Or brotherly love that Jesus and the Father did, did have, have experienced brotherly love because Abraham was called the friend of God. That's right. So there, there was, a, you, to be the friend of God, he, he's got to kind of like you. That's right. Because <laughs> he likes you because you flow with him, right? So, but agape love, this is, by, it's, it, this we don't want to talk, it's for humans to understand. It's a love based on a decision beforehand that you're going to do something and nothing, no circumstances are going to change are going to change it. Sure. That's also called covenant love. I got there because well, a real, a real covenant or a blood covenant was an irreversible covenant. Once it's made, it's made. Somebody's going to die if the covenant is broken. You see, we've got it made because Jesus already died because he knew we'd break it. Amen. You know that? You realize that? One reason Jesus died is he made a covenant with the Father on our behalf, and he knew he was going to break it eventually, so he went ahead and died. You know that? Right. And the Father raised him dead and, and put him as a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Testator? The, uh, what's the, what's the, you call the, uh, the, the lawyers to uh, handle the, the last will and testament? What do you call exactly. it? Executive Jesus says he made raises the dead as the creation made him the executor of the wood. Amen. Glory to God, you can't lose this thing. Amen. But agape, listen, agape is a kind of, if you've never studied that, because this is why, why most Christians go, they're, they're up and down, they're up and down, they're up and down, is because you don't, haven't yet, haven't yet not perceived the love of God. That's what Paul said, pray. Because, listen, if you know the kind of love the Father has towards you, then you, it's not the kind of love uh, that is like, well, you mess up. He said, well, that's the deal's off. Hell with you. You know, preachers like that. You know, preachers came up with hell. You know, you know the Bible it says very little about hell. It's, that's King James. It's usually Shell or Gehenna or uh, what's up? Hades. Hades. But the, the, the hell that has been taught by the, by the King James hell doesn't exist. And you say, oh God, you don't believe in hell. Yes, I believe there's a place that you don't want to go to. That's right. But it is not some place where, where this perverted God can get his jollies for the rest of eternity barbecuing it. That's right. You become a skip. You know, most religious, religious views of God are very perverted. He loved the world so much that he gave his son. But if you don't receive his son, I'm going to burn the hell out of you for eternity and torment you. Sure. In fact, if you've got a human, if you've got a human being that had that mind, they'd be schizophrenic. That's right. They wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And you, you think, this guy's nuts. Do you know that the fires of hell, this is what I've been told by someone who's been there, the fires of hell are actually the consuming fires of God's love that are set to burn whatever is, is, is keeping people from his love. Amen. I didn't say it was, it was fun. You know, the fire of God is not pleasant. Now, I've just seen it. I've never been in it. But, but you understand, even, even in, in, in the place where people go that have rejected Jesus, they rejected it. Later, rejected it. It's, it's still God's there. 
David, David said it in one of the Psalms. He said, where can I go to get away from him? That's right. The highest heaven, the deepest pit. Told him, Hades, or Shell, the groin. He said, I can't get away from him. You have to understand, there's nowhere in, the, in, the, in all of creation that, that you can escape God. That's right. Amen. That he's actually in hell. You know, I'll give you a scripture. You know, it says in Ephesians that Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth and led captivity captive. Jesus went to hell. <clears throat> and I'm not, I don't, I don't, I used to believe uh, with this temple word of faith teaching that Jesus died spiritually. I don't believe that. But I do believe Jesus went to hell. And he went and preached to the captives and and not, I, and not just the ones that were in paradise. I believe preached, preached the ones on the other side and gave them an opportunity to believe. So they're right there. I believe most people stay all day. Everybody hates me and makes them a heretic because if you die tonight, where would you go? Well, you might go to hell. And Jesus might come down and preach to you. And maybe you eventually might believe him and go by there. And nobody comes to the Father except the King. Amen. Am I confusing you? Nobody comes. It ain't no everybody. Everybody is saved, but not everybody has received Christ. Paul's very plain in 2 Corinthians 5, but they said, if one, if one died for all, then all died. In the eyes of the Father, every man, woman, child, every woman, every woman has been crucified with Christ. Yet yeah, not all have heard the good news, not all have received the good news. That's right. So as far as, as far as dad is concerned, he's not mad at anybody. Right. In other words, forget sinners in the hands of an angry God. That's your favorite trouble. It's sinners in the hands of a loving God. Amen. I was a sinner, and I thank God I didn't get in the hands of an angry God. Are you following? Y'all not this group? Y'all still got to love me. You don't got a guy that you don't have to fillet on me or eros me. I won't let you eros me. You're kidding. She's a bad, tough girl. But you got to a guy baby. I got to a guy baby. Because we got couple. We're brothers and sisters. That's right. Got a blood couple. Got a blood couple. Probably got to get her to take it. So let, let's look at this beloved. I poor finish. Look, you, you've got to get, please get this. What does it mean to be a gopitos? A beloved. What does it mean to be beloved? You are beloved. You must to become a mature son. You and when I say son, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say daughter because you don't you ladies are sons too. Can be sons too. It's because sons is a position. That's right. Sons is a tradition. You like, ladies got to be, a, you, you're going to become, grow up and be son. If you're children of God right now, you're going to grow up. If you'll let him grow you up, you to be a son. Son has authority in the house. Son helps run the house. Children just hang out and laugh and have fun like we do most of the time. But God's brought us up. Amen. Now, ladies, if you can be sons, if I can be a bride. That's right. You guys will become brides. So, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> but in order to come into sonship, you, your identity, first of all, your identity has got to be established. When you get to you get to a place of responsibility where you're making decisions, you're making decisions based on what you know goes in line with the heart of the Father. I was telling the story a while ago, I, I got off track, I did is this, you think I did. I said, I was asking the father, I said, what do you want me to do about this situation? Or what's your will in this situation? And this is what startled me. I heard him say, he says, I don't care. Do what you want to do. Or he would, he, yeah, that's what he said. I said, what? Right. It's like I've been, I've been into this trip, you know, for years of what is God's perfect will. Most Christians have never done a thing in their lives looking because they're waiting for God's perfect will to show up. Yeah. Well, I tell you, God's perfect will, it, it happened before the fall. <laughs> right. And since the fall of mankind, they've been a perfect will. That's 
in my time, you accept Jesus, thank you. To keep his God. Jesus was for me. I've talked to us. I've talked to you. Fellow humans here. Fellow yeah. agapitos. Yeah. But identity is very important in your life. Listen, if you don't know who you are, when you come up against some kind of spirit or something that's just going, and they will come because they don't want you doing what God's going to assign you to do. You got. You better know who you are. You better identify with who you are, or they'll be telling you something else. They'll be reminding you of your past and all this stuff and who your mama was and all this stuff. And, it, and pretty soon you'll be slurking off instead of standing up with the authority of the name of Jesus and telling them to get because that territory don't belong anymore to you. Amen. And you've got a right there. And I'm speaking to you as, as a son, a son, not the, but a son in the name of the son. Amen. By the authority, the power of the son to get out. Yeah. Amen. Is that you out there? Come on. This is what growing up means. Right. So what the Lord said to me, he says, hey, make up your mind. He said, make up your mind. You make a decision about something. Instead of coming to me all the time and saying, what do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do? How many of y'all have ever had a business or work with somebody, managed somebody, and every every five minutes they came up to you and said, what do you want me to do? What should I do? What should I do? And if you it drive you nuts. You say, well, go jump in the lake. You know? <laughs> Dummy, probably left it down the lake. Well, you know why they do that? They don't know, they don't know the definition of what they were hired for. That's right. They don't know who they are. Amen. You was hired to be a janitor. Your job is to figure out how to clean the place. You don't need to go to your boss every five minutes and say, where's the broom? I know where the broom is. Should I use the broom? That's what Christians are with Father. That's right. You know, Father, what should I do? Oh, my God. Tell me what you do. What's your will, oh, God? I guess I'm tired of that. Don't come up to Alvin. Pray for me, brother. I know the will of God. That's what you were asking. Now, that didn't mean growing up. That's just asking, Daddy. Ask Daddy. Ask Daddy. I started out this thing saying, don't listen to what I'm saying. This is my testimony. If it, if it does something to stimulate you, watch you go out and make your own testimony. Amen. You go out and engage God. I don't know how. We'll find out. I'll help you. But the, the time has passed in the body of Christ for, for, to be a, that certain people are substitutes, substitute lives for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, the great man or the great woman of God. Oh. Vicariously, I live my life through you. No. Daddy said, you're my child. I want you to grow up and start doing what I've made you to be. You hear me? Yeah. That's, what, that's my testimony. I, I mean, this, I'm just sharing what I, I've got. What God gave me. All right? Don't believe me. So, beloved, this is, beloved, this is this. This, this is this. Is it. In Christ, realm is great. You need to know who you are. This is part of who you are. You are beloved. What is the word? A God with no speed. It means beloved. First, beloved. You be loved. You be loved. You be a God man. You don't understand? I be, I be loved. I be loved. No, but see, that's just part of your identity. You're not going around the press like, oh God. I got a man in the book one time. What a good book. I can't even title it. But he went through and he said, Christians are like this, like little kids with it. You know, if you've done this with a daisy or a flower, collect a flower or a petal, say, she loves me. She loves me not. She, they go all the way around, hopefully you'll end up on she loves me not. That's what they are with God. It's like, he loves me. I just got a thrill and a chill and a prophetic word. He loves me. And then the next Sunday, nobody gave me a word. Or I didn't see an angel. This Sunday I saw an angel. Oh, God must love me. Oh, I didn't see anything. Oh, there was a dull silence. Oh, oh, he doesn't love me anymore. Yeah. That's the way most Christians are. Based, they base God's, the relationship with the Father based on how they feel or what somebody's done or hadn't done to them or to them or for them. 
Is that right? Come on. Anybody? If, if, maybe you want to But that's not the way it is. It's a, he's a he of God by you be loved. Amen. Get up every morning and say, I'll be loved. If you don't know nothing else, get up in the morning and say, I'll be loved. If you're a born again believer, you receive Jesus as Lord of your life. You made a confession. I'm not, I ain't make it simple. He did all the work. He said, I, that's one thing in your identity. You be loved. So when you run against that spirit of, from hell that's trying to destroy you because you're trying to do what God called you to do, you know, there's nothing else. You can hold that in your heart. I know God loves me. And I know, if, I know if I love somebody, I'm going to try to protect them. I know I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do my best. I'm just human. I'm, and I ain't that bigger, but I'm gonna, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll fight to the death to protect my family. That's right. Ain't no more, ain't nothing more dangerous on the face of the earth than an old white man with a gun. <laughs> That's protecting his family. Yeah, I'm just human. How much more so the Father in heaven? If you know you be loved. Are y'all getting anything out of this? If you know you be loved by God, then in any situation, circumstance you get into or get involved in, the one thing you know is God loves you. Father loves me. He loves me. And, and, and you got to know it naturally. If you love somebody, anything you have, any resource you have at your hand, any protective stance you have at your hand, you're going to make it available to the one you love. And the Father is no different. If not, that's where it came from. You got that. You be loved. So I'm beloved. Now, this is what else it says. It means, it says, the, the definition of it says esteemed. I'm going to finish. Esteemed. Esteemed means they, when you look at, at that person, they're, they, they're, they have faith, they have, they're esteemed. I highly esteem them. I value them. Uh, I look at them as, as, as lofty, you know, or, or probably more than you look at yourself like that. <clears throat> esteemed, I highly esteem them. You know what esteem means? I don't know if I know what it means. Yeah, those that know what esteem is, Richard, raise your hand. I'm not gonna call on you. Or at least you get it. Alright? Esteem. But look at yourself. You gotta look at yourself. The way that Daniel looks at you, he esteems you. Oh, you look, see, you look at yourself in the natural side. Oh, I did this this morning. I didn't do this. You look at all the, you, all the negative things about yourself. Or you look at the positive things. Like, that ain't the way he looked at you. He's esteeming you. That is my son. That's my son. That's my son. That's my son. He may have ragged clothes on. He may smell, but that's my son. Right. Huh? Come on, look at this way God the Father wants you to look at me. This way he does look at you, but he wants you to perceive the way he sees you. Amen. He's got no problem with it. He's doing it. He's a God for you. He's a God for you. you. You're the uh, God for Tony. You're the beloved. You've got to be loved. You got to be loved. You understand? You got to receive his love. You may think you're a low-down rat, but he's looking at you and esteeming you. Because he sees you through Christ, through his son. Amen. Amen. All right, what's the, what's the next thing it says? It's dear. To be agapatos, to be beloved, is to be dear. To be dear. They're dear to me. How many of y'all ever watched the Hobbit movies? Remember Precious? The Ring? The Lord of the Rings? Remember what, did, what did Gollum would say? Precious. Precious. It's dear to me. In other words, it meant everything in the world to me. Now that, you know, I don't want to contradict the word to play in your mind, but kill, you know, this is dear to me. It is dear to me. It's dear to me. It means it's dear. Something, something's dear. That's why they used to write, when people used to write letters, they write, Dear Richard. You know, just, you know, because it was a sign of agapitos. Dear. All right, gotcha? 
I'm getting drunk. All right. Favorite. How about that? I'm trying to explain this to my grandkids. I said, do you realize that y'all are my favorite? <laughs> that every, every one of y'all are, are my favorite? And, and so we don't think like that. We think it can only be, there can only be one favorite. But we're not God. But he's asking us to let the Holy Spirit reveal to our spirits the way he sees us. And he actually, if we be a God with us, and we, we are with his favorite. See, that's all that's stretching your mind. It, it, it stretches your mind. It, it stretches your mind. And I'm, I'm God's favorite. I'm his favorite. He's going to get me. If, it, if anybody gets in hand, I'm going to get it. Because I'm his favorite. Amen. And then somebody else is saying the same thing. I'm not going to get an argument with him because I know I'm his favorite. They think he is. I know I am. But they're saying the same thing. I'm his favorite. He thinks he is. Well, I am. And they're both right. Because, because the Father of God, Yahweh God, go to him, I am that I am. Him that was and is, and is to come. He's got enough for everybody. Amen. You got me? We are limited in our ability to, to show favor to people, but he's not limited. And in form or fashion, all right, worthy, here's the last one, worthy of love. Can you even say that? Worthy of love. Y'all are getting tired of me. I see you running. You're running on. Worthy of love. This is one of the hardest things for, for us as believers to believe and to embrace is that we are worthy of His love. That we're worthy of His love. Because we're looking at ourselves. See, that's where your identity comes in. You can only find your identity in Christ because you are in Him. You all follow what I'm saying? When you got born again, you were placed by the Holy Spirit into Christ, into the anointed one. And He is worthy. How many of us would admit without any hesitation that Jesus is worthy? Amen. Y'all don't have a problem with that, do you? You don't have a problem or if, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to embarrass somebody, but if, honestly, if I ask you right now to, if you believe that you're worthy, most of us would with, with good conscience. Now listen, if I said the word good conscience, conscience is cosigned, two knowledges. It's, it's soul knowledge and spirit knowledge. Your spirit, man, would have no trouble standing up right now and saying, I'm worthy. That's right. Because your spirit, man, is, is not veiled by the flesh. But it's your, it's your soul that's having a problem with worthiness. Because it's basically, it's, 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 its knowledge is coming from experience, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why, that's why I don't fail. He ate the wrong tree. Mm -hmm. He ate the, tree, the tree of experience. Good or bad. And based his life, and then his life immediately began to be based on his experience. You ever notice this about when, when after the fall, did, did Adam, you read from Genesis, Adam said, when questioned by the Father, he said, why did you hide? Why were you hiding now? He said, because I was naked. And he knew the father first thing he said, he told you that. Where did you get your information? You know, this deal about, you know, let me just let me go just tell you something. When, when Adam died, <clears throat> the, the father warned him, said, in the day that you eat, you're going to die. Now, from my background uh, and my teaching, the teaching has been was taught by was that, well, Adam didn't die. He lived on another hall he lived. Be 800 or I can't remember. For a long time, right? He, but he died spiritually. Uh, how many of you know that? Uh, all right, let me ask something. What is spiritual death? It's being separated from God. 
Well, let me ask something. He, if he was dead spiritually, how come God, right after he sinned, came in and went looking for him to talk to him? How come every generation after that had somebody? How, what about Enoch? Yeah, amen. If he was spiritually dead, if all humanity was spiritually dead, how come Enoch could walk with God to the point where one day God just took him? And, and then I said this word walk in Hebrew means to go up and down. He ascended. If you read the book of Enoch, which is not in the canticles of our 66 books of the Bible, but it is in the Ethiopian, original Ethiopian Bible, there's 81 books in the Bible. They cut a lot out. You know, I don't get into that. But in the book of Enoch, Enoch talks about going up and down, going to the heavens, talking to angels. That experience. I'm trying to get your word out. But when Adam died, listen to me, Adam died. He lived on to be 800 years old, but he died. What? The promise was, in the day that you eat, you shall die. Isn't it right? Yeah. Do you know that a biblical day is a thousand year? It's in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. A day is as a as a thousand years, you know, a thousand years is as a day in the eyes of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Thus, if you read some of the other books like Jubilee, which is the little Genesis, which is not in your canon of your Bible of the King James Bible, it'll say this. When Adam died, it was said by his own people. He said, just as the Lord said, he did not finish his day before he died. Mm -hmm. You can believe that or not. That's up to you. I don't care. So in the eyes of God, if he didn't live to be a thousand years, he didn't finish his first day out. That's right. And it also says, see, all these people want to hold this stuff up about, well, Adam didn't die. He lived 800 years. God lied. He said he died in day eight. No, he didn't. He didn't really finish out his year. He saw his, his day. He didn't finish one day. It'll also give you an idea about how, what God got in store for you. Amen. That you're, this whole 70 reason of strength, 80, that was for people that were cursed in the wilderness. Right. You don't live under the Noahic covenant, even it's 120 years. But actually now, we've entered into a time, a new end time, completion time, for who knows how long you're going to live. That's right. And with that, I better shut up or I'm getting myself in a hole. <laughs> Thanks the Lord. And we're going to let these folks go. We're going to have the table, amen, if you want to stay in heaven. We'll say goodbye to you. God bless you. Everybody say, say something good to them. Lord bless them. Lord keep them. Lord make your face, Father Yahweh, make your face shine upon them and give them peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God amen. bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. Praise God. I want you to listen to the scripture. Bye-bye.